The JSA, or the Justice Society of America, is my personal favorite superhero group, and it's one of the most significant groups in comic book history, because they're actually the very first superhero group that crossed over several different superheroes who were appearing in different titles at the time, predating both the Avengers and the Justice League by over two decades. So as you can imagine, they are a group with a lot of history, and even though they are making their first cinematic appearance in Black Adam, that isn't the first time they've been adapted into live action, or even the first time they've appeared in a movie. So in this video, I'm gonna do a retrospective going through every single movie and television appearance of the JSA in chronological order. The first appearance of the Justice Society outside of the comics was technically in a two-part episode of the early 2000s Justice League cartoon titled Legends. And I say technically in this case because the show's writers originally wrote the episode with the intention of using the JSA characters, but DC didn't allow to use them. So instead, they opted to create a group of original characters who were paying homage to the JSA. They named this new group the Justice Guild of America, and every hero was a direct counterpart to an original JSA member from the comics, with Catman for example being a homage to Wildcat, Black Siren being based on Black Canary, Green Guardsman was of course based on Green Lantern Alan Scott, The Streak was the Flash Jay Garrick, and Tom Turbine was supposed to be the Atom All Pratt. Also, besides the original heroes being based on other JSA heroes from the comics, the villains who were created for this episode were also all based on classic JSA villains like Sportsmaster, The Wizard, Icicle and The Fiddler. I gotta be honest here, this is one of my favorite storylines from the Justice League cartoon. I always loved this two-part episode as a kid. It had a really somber and melancholic tone to it while still being very campy and fun at the same time, and the plot twist at the end is very effective. At first, this might seem like a more light-hearted episode, but as the story progresses, we get hints of an underlying sense of tension, and once what's really going on gets revealed, it leaves a lasting impression on you. It really is one of the more mature Justice League episodes once you think about it. The Justice Society never fully appeared in the DCAU as a complete group, However, once the show shifted from Justice League to the latter, Justice League Unlimited, the roster of heroes of the league got expanded and a number of the new heroes in the show were actually JSA characters from the comics. Most of these heroes only appeared as background characters and never really had any impact on the plot. Characters like Our Man, Sandman, Atom Smasher, Citizen Steel, Dr. Midnight, and other characters who've also been a part of the JSA in the comics. Dr. Fate also had a really fun episode with Aquaman, Hawkgirl and Solomon Grundy, which was referencing and paying homage to the Defenders, a superhero group from Marvel. There was also one JSA character in the show who managed to get a bit more focus than other JSA heroes, and that character is Ted Grant aka Wildcat who had a fantastic episode focused on him, titled The Cat and the Canary, where he is shown to be participating in an illegal metahuman fighting competition due to his feelings of insecurity and frustration because of his old age and him feeling like he's past his prime. So he started competing in clandestine metahuman fights to boost his confidence and make himself feel useful again. Given that at this point in his life he's a veteran boxer and crime fighter in his old age, he made his protege, Black Canary, feel very worried about his well-being and made her want to stop him from participating in those illegal fights, making for a very engaging and personal JLU episode. This episode is one of my top 5 favorite episodes from all of Justice League and JLU. Ever since I first saw it as a kid, it made me completely adore Wildcat making him one of my all-time favorite superheroes, and in turn, it made me interested in Wildcat in the comics, which introduced me to the Justice Society as a whole, and in turn, it made the JSA my favorite superhero group of all time, and really a lifelong fan of them, all due to this fantastic episode. The next time we got to see the JSA outside the comics 
wasn't a full appearance, it was a small cameo in the animated movie Justice League The New Frontier, an adaptation of one of my all-time favorite comic books. In this story, masked superheroes ended up being outlawed after World War II ended and the US government started obligating masked vigilantes to reveal their secret identities something that the JSA members obviously didn't agree with and they ended up forcibly retiring and disbanding. In the movie we can see them marching on looking pretty defeated in a flashback sequence. Later on in the movie we also get to see a wildcat cameo. It's in a scene set in Las Vegas where he's having a heavyweight championship fight as his secret identity Ted Grant. They showed Barry Allen watching him on TV and in the comic we do get to see a bit more of the fight in some panels. In 2008, we got to see the start of the amazing Batman the Brave and the Bold, a fantastic animated series that pays homage to all of comic book history and its great legacy, but it especially paid respect to the golden and silver age of comics and it put the spotlight on many iconic and obscure characters that are emblematic of that era. As such, you can imagine that a lot of the heroes that appeared in the show were JSA members. And given that they were characters that appeared regularly in DC Comics throughout that period of history. And during the show, they had two episodes completely dedicated to the Justice Society. One of them was called The Golden Age of Justice, an episode that shows Batman and Black Canary working with the JSA to fight against Per Degaton an old foe of the JSA from World War II. The episode also shows flashbacks to Batman and Black Canary training with the Justice Society when they were just starting out as vigilantes. The second episode to focus on the JSA was Season 3's Crisis 22,300 Miles Above Earth, a really good episode from the show that's about the Justice League International and the Justice Society having a party on the Watchtower and completely not vibing with each other at all. They don't, they don't really like each other. Would you mind looming somewhere else, please? As a matter of fact, for the first half of the episode, they actively dislike each other. And it shows funny banter between the OG JSA heroes comparing themselves with their legacy version. You were supposed to be one of the most powerful lanterns ever, but your ring is vulnerable to wood. So what happens if a guy comes at you with a pointy stick? Same thing that happens to you if he paints it yellow. And this one in particular is one of my favorite episodes from the entire show. It's really, really fun. But beyond those two episodes that had the JSA as a main focus, the JSA members individually also appeared multiple times throughout the show. Wildcat was a really prominent character that appeared a bunch of times on the show and he even had an episode with Batman and the Outsiders. He also had an intro segment where he fights against Bane. The Spectre also had an intro segment with Batman, and also Doctor Fate where they fought against Wotan, and Jay Garrick also had an intro segment with Batman, and Stargirl also had one. So as you can see, Batman the Brave and the Bold was a series that showed a lot of love for the JSA, and if you're a fan of them, I highly suggest you check out the show. The next time the Justice Society appeared on TV was also their first ever live action adaptation and it was in a two part special episode of Smallville in its ninth season. I remember that they kinda made it a big deal when it originally happened and they marketed the two parter under the title Absolute Justice. It showed Clark Kent teaming up with Hawkman, Stargirl and Dr. Fate who were the sole remaining members of the Justice Society in this universe after they were persecuted by the US government and most of them died. Other characters who appeared included Wesley Dodds aka Sandman and Icicle. I remember being really excited to see the JSA in live action when it originally aired and I remember liking it just fine but while it was a commendable first effort to adapt the JSA into live action for the first time, I think that the JSA have been adapted into live action more successfully in the years since. Following this, the JSA had a brief cameo in Young Justice in the season 1 episode Humanity. They show up briefly in a photo, and we can see Wildcat, Alan Scott, Sandman, Dr. Fate, Jay Garrick, and Red Tornado. These last three characters appeared more times throughout the show besides this cameo. 
Later on, we got to see new live-action adaptations of the JSA characters in the CW Arrowverse line of shows. Specifically, the JSA appeared in Season 2 of Legends of Tomorrow, where they were shown to be a covert group of vigilantes and mystery men that helped the US government throughout World War II. And they were comprised of Our Man, Citizen Steel, Stargirl, Obsidian, and Vixen. Beyond that appearance in Legends of Tomorrow, multiple other JSA characters appeared in the Arrowverse shows. Jay Garrick, for example, appeared a lot in The Flash, played by the great John Wesley Shipp, and the version of Wildcat appeared in Season 3 of Arrow. And Our Man was also heavily rumored to have his own show in development at the CW during the mid-2010s, but nothing ever really came of it in the end. Next up, the JSA appeared in the 2019 show Stargirl, which was initially created as an original show for the DC Universe streaming service and platform, alongside other shows such as Titans and Doom Patrol. This show takes place a decade since the disappearance of the JSA after they were defeated by the Injustice Society, and it follows the story of Courtney Whitmore, who ends up being in possession of the Cosmic Rod, the signature weapon of Starman, after her mom marries Pat Dugan, played by the great Luke Wilson by the way, a mild-mannered and good-natured man, but who is actually Stripesy, the ex-sidekick of the last Starman, and an honorary member of the JSA who was present at their last battle, and they both end up being entangled in an adventure to take down the surviving Injustice Society members who are still an active threat. The show is a really great adaptation of the original 90s Stargirl comic book run, in large part thanks to its writer and creator of Stargirl, Jeff Johns, working as an executive producer on the show, and this is something that I really like, because Jeff Johns is a writer who has proven to have a deep understanding and love for the JSA. He had a fantastic run in the comics in the early 2000s that I highly suggest anyone who is interested in getting into the JSA to check out it's a great starting point for any newcomer to the Justice Society's world. And I also really recommend this show, since it's honestly pretty good. I love its light-hearted tone, but it's also great how it's not afraid to get serious and allow its actors to actually emote and let the characters grow. What's also great about the show is the three-dimensionality that it gives to its villains. While the Injustice Society are still depicted to be ruthless villains, they still humanize them by giving them children, and it really gives some depth to the characters beyond just being villains. And it goes without saying, but the adaptation of the Justice Society in the show is great. It's my favorite live-action depiction of them. They truly look and act great in this show. The next project we got that focused on the JSA was actually their very first movie with them as protagonists. It was Justice Society World War II, the second movie in the Tomorrowverse line of DC movies after the excellent Superman Man of Tomorrow. The movie follows Barry Allen going back in time accidentally to the Second World War, where he meets the original Golden Age Flash and also his Justice Society teammates a covert government metahuman task force comprised of The Flash, Our Man, Hawkman, Black Canary, and their leader Wonder Woman. Even though the JSC roster is kinda small and I do wish they added different characters into the movie, I still understand why they chose to have few characters for the group, so that way they could focus more time on each character individually. But still, some characters get fleshed out more and have significantly more screen time than others. Our Man, for example, didn't really get any development in the movie, he was just sort of there. And the villain of the movie is also kind of underwhelming. I don't really want to spoil anything, and I also don't really want to give a bad impression of the movie, because by all means it was pretty good and I really liked it, but it did have some flaws, and I feel like the villain and main conflict chosen for the movie was one of those flaws. I just found it to be a disservice to the great JSA rogues gallery, since the movie is set in World War II, they could have easily included characters like Vandal Savage, Perdegaton, Captain Nazi, or hell, even some crazy choices like Solomon Grundy for example. But instead, the villain that they chose for the movie didn't really have any personal connection or rivalry with the JSA. He just sort of felt disconnected from the rest of the plot. 
Still though, I do want to make clear that this movie is still really cool and well worth your time. It's a good first impression for anyone who's interested in getting familiar with the JSA. It's really cool how this movie is one of the few times outside of the comics where we get to see the JSA in their prime, fighting at the height of World War II, since most times when they appear outside of the comics, it's in present day and they function more as mentors to the new generation of heroes, rather than being heroes in their prime. So getting to see them in action during wartime was really cool, and the movie also has some of my favorite action in any DC animated movie. And that's in large part because it tries to emulate the stylized action of the 2017 Wonder Woman movie, which also had some fantastic and great action scenes. Overall, this is a really good animated movie and a great first movie for the JSA. And I do hope that we get to see another movie in the future with the Justice Society in its title. And lastly, we got the most recent adaptation of the JSA in other media with their DCEU debut in 2022's Black Adam. After watching the movie, I can honestly say that I think that they properly adapted with care and respect the JSA as a group and each character they chose individually. Dr. Fate in particular was a highlight of the movie. I really liked how they presented the group as an already established team with history behind it. And I also find it really cool how even though the roster is pretty small, only comprised of four heroes, two of them representing the OG Golden Age history of the group, them being Dr. Fate and Hawkman, and the other half of the group are legacy heroes who are following in the footsteps of their predecessors, those legacy heroes being of course Adam Smasher and Cyclone. This is a really important aspect that I love that they got right, since the legacy aspect of the Justice Society is one of their most appealing elements as to why they are so relevant within DC and comic book history as a whole. It's something that differentiates them from all other superhero groups. Overall, this first big budget cinematic outing for the JSA really left me wanting to see more of them in the DCEU, and I can definitely see this incarnation of them having their own TV show or movie in the future, I certainly hope so. And there you have it, that was the Justice Society's entire filmography, their complete history in movies and television outside the comics, and I really hope that DC starts using them even more, both in the comics and other media. The JSA really are some of the greatest comic book characters ever. One of the biggest reasons why I love the JSA so much is that they are a testament to the comic book medium's long-lasting, decade-spanning great influence in pop culture and beyond. I see the Justice Society and immediately I think about legacy, the golden age, history, family, and above all else, just the absolute love that I have for comic books, their rich history, and everything relating to them. So yeah, the JSA really deserves all the love they can get. So please, let me know in the comments, what do you think about the JSA? And what would you like to see DC do with them? Would you like to see a new ongoing comic book from them? Would you like to see a JSA movie or TV show? Please let me know in the comments what you think. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Have a great one.